Welcome back to the studio. It's been a little bit of time. It's been about a month. If you saw my last video, you know I was rewiring the kiln and I took the time to replace some kiln bricks as well. But that's all done. I'm cleaning up the studio and I finally completed my first cone 10 run. So let me show you the things that we got into the kiln and what happened with them. So after making the ball mill and trying it out, I realized that this Cone 5 B-Mix is just showing a little too much wear and several of you suggested trying a Cone 10 porcelain or something harder that might not wear away as much. So that's really the premise for this firing. I got some Cone 10 porcelain. I want to make some new grinding balls for the ball mill, but I thought it'd be a good opportunity as well to do a few other tests, including uh, taking some of the backyard clay that I made in a previous video and doing some melt tests and as well I've had viewer suggestions that maybe I could use it for slip decorating so I'm going to go ahead and give those things a try as well as a few others and I'll show you what happened. So this is really fun I'd never worked with porcelain before and I didn't really have anything I needed I made a bunch of little trays uh, that are not here right now that I might give away as Christmas presents or something, but really nothing substantial. I have one mixing bowl and a couple smaller ones and a couple cups, but it was a pretty small firing. Now one of the things I had to do was I had to make some new glazes. So I got out John Britt's book and I looked up a leech recipe for a clear and a leech recipe for a temaku. As far as those glazes go, they worked out really nice, really glossy. So I consider those a win. The next thing I wanted to do was try to fire some of the backyard clay that I had harvested and used before. And you can see I took a little squirt bottle and on each one of these I just kind of made some patterns. This has the clear over it. This has the clear over it. And then this one is not glazed over. I wanted to see the difference but it looks really good uh, maybe a little bit bubbly but for for backyard mud that I really was using initially as a clay body I think this works really well now see this is a little bit sloppy and having it put on a little too thick and then of course I have the temaku on the inside of this one but that was a real success so I think if I do cone 10 firing or even cone 5 uh, I might be using this in some sort of a decorative way. And the nice thing about using a slip is you don't need a whole bunch. It's not like you need to harvest a ton of clay to make a teapot or something. So, oh, I did have one more. I'll show you me brushing this on. But again, I just took some dry clay left over from the previous test, slaked it down, brushed it on, and given that I just dug that out of my backyard, I think that is pretty cool. Uh, one other thing I wanted to know was, will my Cone 5 glazes work at Cone 10? Will they run like crazy? And obviously, as you can see, um, they're pretty stable. I don't have any crazing or anything funny like that. I really thought that they would run like mad, and they didn't. So, I'll show you. I glazed this with a floating blue. It, it's definitely a different color than I normally get, but this is a floating blue over a white, and this is seafoam green under uh, clear. I should say clear on both of these. And I, they turned out pretty good. I'm really excited. I didn't think that I'd be able to use these glazes at Cone 10, but it looks like that is possible. Another example of a Temaku test. Clear on the inside. But I also wanted to show you, if you've seen an earlier video where I was melting rocks from my backyard, those were fired at Cone 5 and the red ones seemed to melt the best. So I went out and wet down my gravel and looked for some red rocks. These three are rocks. And two of the three really, really melted. And this one, not as much. You could just kind of like melty spots in it, but they definitely melted a lot more. Let me go outside and get a picture of this in the sun so you can kind of see there's bubbles in it. There's kind of a gold 
fleck to them. Uh, this is really cool. So I might come back and try grinding some of these rocks down and making a, a glaze of sorts with, with the backyard rocks. But I also wanted to know whether or not my backyard clay fires to cone 10 or could it handle cone 10? Uh, does it mature better at cone 10? Just, it's almost like you took a candy bar and put it under a flame for one second. Like it just kind of melted the surface, didn't really melt away. So I'm not sure if I made an entire cup or a piece out of my backyard clay, uh, if it would collapse, but this did not turn into a puddle. So this tells me that my backyard clay uh, is certainly gonna handle something up to close to cone 10, maybe cone eight is what I'd have to fire it up. But I was excited to see that it was melting a little bit, but not too much. So that was interesting. And while I was at it, I made some of these. You're gonna see these in a future video. And they're just simple extrusions, like a handle profile extrusion. But I want to know, cone 10 porcelain, how does that compare to my cone five B mix? Is the extra cost of firing, which is about $5 more kiln firing, is it worth it? And, and so I'm going to take and we're going to break some of these in a future video and compare the how much how much weight they can bear or in some way I'm going to measure are these stronger than my cone 5 B mix because I think the porcelain although it didn't turn out translucent or anything that that you might think uh, if I know that it's more durable and it doesn't cost much more uh, I would definitely be interested in making pieces with a more durable clay body. So in a future video, you're going to see these as well. In a future video, you're going to see these. I'm really excited about this. I've been kind of referring to these as my raviolis, but what I'd like to know is, can I make a, in this case, a knife forge where I can, it, it would look like an insulated ceramic a mailbox of sorts that we could blow a flame into and I could heat for blacksmithing or something like that heat metal and you know maybe make a knife or something so these two are both cone all of these all these test tiles too are all a cone 13 clay that's intended for making kiln furniture so it should be flame proof it should be really durable but um, I took some ceramic fiber and this one has got a little one in the corner this has one layer of ceramic fiber inside this layer, inside this ravioli. We have another with two layers of ceramic fiber. And then I also wanted to know, you know, ceramic fiber is expensive. And if you saw an earlier video where I made a ceramic sponge, I want to know how does a ceramic sponge compare to these two? So I took a piece of sponge, saturated it in clay and put it inside and burnt it out. So, I'd like to take all three of these as well as these two empty tiles and we're, in a future video I'm going to put them over a flame and I'm going to take some temperature measurements and just see how well these insulate from a, you know, if I had a flame on the bottom, can I take some measurements that tell me how well this insulates and as well putting it on a flame are they going to break. So that's an upcoming video. But normally I don't fire, I clearly didn't fire to cone 13 in this case, but I normally don't fire this high, and so it's an opportunity to do some tests with kiln furniture clay. So the ball mill balls I made this time uh, as replacements, you can see I made them in different sizes, so hopefully they'll nest well together. Even looking at this pile now, I, I kind of wish I even made more, but I'm hoping that these porcelain high fire Ceramic balls are going to wear down less when we use them for grinding glaze materials. And again, this was why I did the whole firing was to get these balls and the rest were just extra tests.
Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. And I also hope you're inspired to go out in your own backyard, dig some clay, and put it on your pots to see what happens.